from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. A 68-year-old Blackman's Bay man is in a stable condition in hospital after a serious crash between a pedestrian and a truck in Hobart last night. Just before seven, police were called to the intersection of Russell Crescent and Sandy Bay Road. They were advised the man had been crossing Russell Crescent when he was struck. He was taken to the Royal Hobart Hospital with serious leg injuries. A 34-year-old Portsrail truck driver was subjected to a blood alcohol test, but police believe speed drugs and alcohol were not contributing factors. Any witnesses to the accident are asked to call 131 4. Another person has been charged after a major drug operation in Hobart on Wednesday. A 29-year-old Moona man who was in the Royal Hobart Hospital with a buttock injury faced a magistrate in a bedside court hearing today. He's been charged with a string of offences including trafficking firearms and a controlled substance. He was remanded in custody to reappear in court again on July 8. Tasmanians facing homelessness will be offered hotel rooms to live in temporarily as part of a suite of new initiatives to combat the housing crisis. The government met with opposition parties and community groups today after being accused of dragging its heels when it comes to protecting the vulnerable. As the housing crisis continues, the government, opposition and community sector are today trying to come up with a solution. Their plan to work with accommodation providers, the government renting out their spare rooms for vulnerable people to live in until they can find a place of their own. We're going to reach out uh, to the tourism and accommodation sector, look at their low season and provide new sorts of brokerage, we call it, and incentives to book stock. In the longer term, adding prefabricated buildings to already existing shelters. Where we've got existing shelters in Greater Hobart and across the state uh, that are at full capacity now and have space uh, to take additional units, uh, we'll be talking with them directly. But it's unclear if any new money will be available. I'm certainly very hopeful that we'll see immediate action falling out of this, but what we don't have is an assurance around the time frame about the operational plan or details of resourcing. Away from the meeting, property developers threw their weight behind a plan. The developers are currently uh, working with both suppliers globally um, that can assist with immediate solutions. So I think it is disappointing that, um, that they haven't looked to engage the private sector at this stage. Earlier in the day, the Housing Minister fronting an inquiry into short-stay accommodation, saying there is room for improvement. We agree. Uh, it's clear that there's an issue when it comes to compliance that is a cause for concern for our community sector and the tourism and hospitality industries as well. Left with a long list of things to do to tackle the crisis. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Tonight marks the opening of Dark Mofo's Winter Feast. Over eight days, patrons will experience a variety of food and drink with specialist children's activities also added this year. Our reporter John Hunt joins us from the Hobart waterfront. Good evening, John. A busy night ahead, no doubt. Joe, yes, a busy night for sure, and I can assure you it smells as good as it looks. Crowds are starting to gather now here for the opening, with a selection of food and drink from around the world awaiting them inside. The event will run for the next eight days, with up to 30,000 people expected to pass through the gates each night, making it one of the more popular events on the Dark Mofo calendar. Months of planning and preparation have gone into this event, with final touches taking place until as late as this afternoon. Here's how the day unfolded and a sneak peek at what you can expect this year. Hours before the gates open, Winter Feast was a hive of activity. Final touches were being put to the venue while chefs were busy cooking up a storm. Over 90,000 people are expected to pass through the gates from tonight. It takes two weeks to set up for this, so storeholders have been bumping in for the last five days. Uh, it's a massive undertaking. Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet remains the dominant theme, with 300 crosses, thousands of candles and gold all over the venue. There's also a hint of forest. There's a, a lot of foliage around the place. With the forecourt installation, um, which we do new every year, that's a forest. There's also been a changing of the guard, with 25 new vendors popping up this year. 
A lot of the big players from previous years aren't here this year, uh, so it's a really fresh um, new look. Dedicated children's activities are also new to the program. Fire and Ice will run from 4pm each night of the feast, with activities designed to introduce kids to new food. We've got three activities that are based around tasting and trying new foods that maybe they haven't tried before. Marlon Zarens is one of the many kept busy during the event. He's responsible for the look of the signs at the stalls. It's probably about three or four hours. It takes me about two months to do the whole thing. Um, and now we've arrived at the end, uh, probably another, you know, I'm here every day. And with planning and preparation all finalised, organisers are now preparing to watch it unfold. Maintaining the look of it, the function of it, but yeah, it's a huge relief to get it open. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. One punch attacks and the devastation they can cause are the target of a new awareness campaign aimed at saving lives. Across Australia, the Stop the Cowards Punch initiative is already gaining momentum and today the program was officially launched in Tasmania. Tasmania's bustling bars and restaurants. A new awareness campaign launched today to keep patrons safer while they enjoy the nightlife. 99.9% .9 of people know how to behave and how to act. It's the small percentage that ruin it for the society, for society and for everyone else out there and that's what the Cowards Punch campaign is aimed at. The Stop the Cowards Punch media campaign aiming to increase awareness and educate people about one punch attacks which can turn deadly. Part of a national initiative by professional boxer Danny Green to give young people the tools they need to avoid and de-escalate violent situations. It's going to take a while but it is going to have an effect and term cowards punch is a very, a very basic yet very powerful tool especially to young blokes to be branded a coward there's nothing worse. We are lucky as a society in Tasmania where we don't have massive issues in this space but that's not a reason not to act now. This is about being on the front foot. This is about getting, uh, building an opportunity for us to get education out early. In the next few months, the government will also introduce legislation to specifically target the attacks, aiming to close a current loophole in the law. An offender can claim that because what he or she did was an accident um, or was simply the result of them being intoxicated, uh, they might be able to avoid criminal conviction. A specialist task force of local members has been created to get the campaign up and running. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. They can suffer in the shadows, vulnerable to physical, sexual and financial attacks. Each year, more than 400 calls are made to Tasmania's helpline for elder abuse. But those fighting the problem say that's only the tip of the iceberg. They held the message in their hands and shouted it in the air. No excuse! No excuse! Mayors, police and campaigners walking together in Launceston and Hobart against elder abuse. It's hard to know how many older Tasmanians suffer physical, sexual or financial harm because the issue is chronically underreported. And if your son or your daughter who you love is doing something nasty to you, then you're very reluctant to to do something about that and often you don't know pathways to do something about that. Each year roughly 400 people call Tasmania's hotline seeking help. There are some peak periods around Easter and Christmas where there is a bit of a spike in calls around those times. The focus isn't just on abuse by friends or family members. Recent months have also seen elderly residents targeted in alleged armed robberies and home invasions. We have seen some older people victims of crime, particularly robberies and stealings and aggravated burglaries. So that in itself is a form of, uh, of elder abuse where older people are vulnerable. Meanwhile, the state government today released its $850,000 abuse prevention strategy. Anyone seeking assistance can call the elder abuse hotline. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. A mountain bike store in Derby is beefing up security, having had thousands of dollars worth of goods stolen. The business says crime in the town is almost non-existent. Ben Jones's business is at the forefront of Derby's mountain biking revolution, but the recent theft of $25,000 worth of goods from his store has come as a shock. It's not a nice feeling, a bit uneasy, but um, you know it's not going to deter us. We'll just keep doing what we're doing. 
Some of the stolen bikes had been there only a week, but Ben's fighting back, fortifying the shop front and installing extra cameras, while the entire industry is now on the hunt for the stolen items, including a motorised e-bike. We've notified every Bosch um, dealer they should show their head somewhere. Cases like this in Derby are extremely rare. In fact, it's the first time Evolution Biking has been targeted. The other businesses, um, you know, they've, they've battened down the hatches more than what they, they did before. But this tin mining town turned mountain trails mecca still has plenty to look forward to. Derby's just been chosen to host a round of the Asia Pacific Enduro Series in November. It just validates Derby that it, we're 100% uh, rock, rock solid with our trails and what we're doing here uh, and this place is just going to keep going to the next level. If you can help identify the culprit, contact police. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local not-for-profit Tasmanian super fund. The Australian share market edged higher and hit another 11.5-year peak in the process. The ASX 200 index rose 11.6 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 68.98 US cents and 105 New Zealand cents. Clarence's TSL finals hopes could slip further out of reach when they take on a red-hot Lauderdale outfit at Skybus Oval tomorrow. While North Hobart and Kingborough's star recruits are set to play out one of the most exciting head-to-head -head battles of the season. The Bombers coach is a busy man these days. Um, who's got their phone on? That would be me. Hello. Taking on an out-of-sorts Clarence, who've managed just the one win from eight matches in 2019, the Bombers get the chance to cement top spot on the table with a win at home. If we, we go into the game being a bit more physical than, than we probably have been in the last few weeks, um, I certainly think that will um, sort of play in our favour and, and could have the edge on them. The Roos find themselves in unfamiliar territory at the halfway point of the season compared to previous years, sitting outside the top five and now needing to battle tooth and nail to keep their season alive. Well, I think if you look at our, our next month of footy, if, if we don't sort of get, if we don't go two and two or three and one, um, we're going to struggle to make finals because it means that we'll get beaten by North Hobart, Launceston and the Tigers. I still think we're a better team than what we've showed. It hasn't quite connected yet. It might not connect this year, but we are working hard to, to get it to work. Coming up against old rivals North Hobart, the Kingborough coach had a solution to nullify the impact of star D's midfielder Sam Daly. Hopefully, you know, we can have one of those gastro outbreaks that um, North Lonnie had last year. Boasting their own former AFL recruit and Kieran Lovell, the battle between the pair at North Hobart Oval is set to be one of the most exciting scenes for both clubs in years. Two guys who've been in the AFL system, two guys who win a lot of the footy, getting to use their tricks, you know, that's what we want to see, that's what, what the people want to see. I think uh, we should go like the Dangerfield Fife scenario at Adelaide Oval a few years ago and just let them go head to head. This weekend's a massive game for our club and hopefully we can rectify some of our wrongdoings from last time. Well, it's set to be a packed out Elfin Stadium tomorrow night when cross-state rivals the Launceston Tornadoes and Hobart Huskies take to the court. And with both sides' seasons hanging in the balance, the contest is expected to be fierce. Both clubs have been lacklustre for much of this NBL1 season, but there's nothing like a Tasmanian rivalry to reignite the spark. Last time we went down to Hobart and beat them, um, we were able to execute and deliver what we needed to do on the offensive and, and defensive end, um, and it should be an awesome game. The sides may now be playing just for pride, however, with playoffs looking unlikely, having notched up just the seven wins between them. But Washington is adamant the Torns can still shake things up in the back half of the season. Key is playing our style of play, um, making stops, hitting shots, playing team basketball. The Hobart Huskies men's side travels to Olverston tomorrow night for their clash with interstate foes, the Northwest Thunder. And it's set to be a high stakes affair with the side sitting neck and neck on the ladder and just two wins outside the top five. On form, probably they're, they're ahead of us, I'd say. You know, well, they've beaten us twice this year already. So, um, you know, it'll be a good, it's always tough going up there, but it's always good fun. To soccer and new Kingba coach Jez Kanth is keen to keep the momentum rolling, having notched up his first win in charge against Riverside last weekend. The mood's been pretty good. I mean, um, you go into every game expecting to get a result. The Lions take on the Hobart Zebras at KG5 tonight, who are refusing to let their NPL title hopes fade, despite needing a flawless end to the season to close the gap on the top three sides. There's nothing out of reach because there's 11-12 games. I mean, sure, we're way off the pace, don't get me wrong. 
Um, but you know, we've got to be got to be honest. Um, we're going to have a major influence in this if we perform. Finally in sport, Stuart McSwain has recorded his second fastest time in the 3,000 metres at last night's Diamond League meet in Norway. The King Island runner finished sixth with a time of 7 minutes 38 seconds. His next race in the series is the 1,500 metres in Morocco on Sunday. Good evening. Cloudy weather today, mostly. A few showers over the west and far south. Hobart, Burnie and Devonport all 14. Launceston one degree cooler. The warmest was 15 at Smithton, Friendly Beaches and Bushy Park. Low Heads and Helens and the Islands 14. Grove, Ooze and Strawn 13 degrees. Fingal the low with a minus one overnight. Low level convective cloud over us today. Yesterday and overnight Queenstown had 33 millimetres of rain while today the highest fall was 12 millimetres at Mount Reed. An extensive area of cold unstable Stable air is to our west between two cold fronts over the Southern Ocean. Low cloud covers parts of southern and eastern Australia. Tomorrow a cold front crosses Tasmania before weakening as another tracks over the bite. A stronger front will approach from the southwest and the high pressure ridge will persist over the mainland. West to southwest winds at 15 to 25 knots reaching 30 knots over the southeast at first, easing during the morning before becoming more variable. A strong wind warning in the southeast from Tasman Island to southeast Cape. Here's how the weekend's shaping up. Partly cloudy for Hobart, 13 the maximum, just 10 for Medina, cloudy for Oatlands and 9. Launceston, a top of 13 degrees with early fog clearing, 13 the top for Devonport and cloudy for Lyawini, a minus 1 overnight to 6 tomorrow. 13 the high for Burnie and partly cloudy, maybe a shower for Strawn and Marawar, 12 and 13 degrees. St Helens, 13, a possible light shower, 14 for Swansea and partly cloudy for Orford, 13 degrees. On Sunday, light showers over the north and west. Fine for the rest after morning frost. Fine on Monday, apart from another shower over the north and west. And on Tuesday, showers extending statewide. Possible thunderstorms and small hail over the west and snow to 800 metres. A shower in Perth and possibly for Adelaide tomorrow. Partly cloudy for Melbourne. A late shower forecast for Sydney with 20 degrees and showers up the Queensland coast. Bit of cloud about, 11 degrees in Hobart, clear in Launceston, 10 right now and mostly clear in Devonport and 11 degrees. That's the way it's all happening for the weekend. Jo, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a lovely weekend too. Being very sweet to each other, aren't we? Well, that's all from the news team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We'll see you a little later. Bye-bye.